The first book of Samuel, session number 8. We continue in chapter 2, where yesterday we learned about the problems with those people who are supposed to look after us, the people in authority, the people who are supposed to be pastors, um, shepherds, and yet these people are actually sons of Belial. And look how beautiful, with that in mind, what do we say to each other? The very next word, as we end it with verse 17, where Yahuwah said, the, the sin of these young men was very great before Yahuwah because they were keeping other people from coming to the temple. And then with all that in mind about this enemy structure against whom we fight in the end days, it says, but. This word, but. So imagine on the one side you've got this challenge and this problem. And then on the other side, you have the solution. And in between, you've got the scale. You know, th these two are hanging on a, on a balance. And in the center, you've got the scale. And that word, for, that scale word is but. Yes, we have this problem. Yes, we have the end time deception where people in these positions are actually the, uh, the, the very sons of Satan himself. Keeping people from Yahuwah, showing them another way, a Babylon way, raping them, stealing from them, and yet they are remaining in their leadership positions. Actually coming out of the very um, center of God's own people. You know, how do you even identify them? This is a huge problem. What do we do? Where do we go? How will we blah, blah, blah? But then the Bible says, but... So the moment you say, here's the problem, but then there's an expectation of having an alternative, isn't it? You have, you have A, but here is B. And B is going to be in direct contradiction and opposition to the challenge and the problem that we have in A. So in the center of these two balances, we have the the scale and the scale says but verse 18 but Samuel remember this name represents that we Shema Al but that we also have an Al that Shema us and this morning when when I prayed my in my own time my my time with God I, I went to sit down in the chair and and I was honest with God. And I said, Yahuwah, um, let me be honest because what can I hide from you? You know, I do pray a lot. Um, and sometimes it's like an ocean. It's like a damn wall that breaks open and there's just a rushing of water. And I cannot um, say the words fast enough and I cannot bring the the feeling and the emotions forward enough like Hannah and my mouth is going like this and people if Eli was there he would have thought that I'm crazy as well because tears are streaming down blah 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 but some mornings I don't know what to pray so I, I stood before Yahuwah this morning and I said father um I if I think about you know even my own children you know oh are we, do we have to pray again and for many of you, you know as well, it, it's, a, it's an effort to have to think about the fact that you have to go and sit down and now you have to spend time in prayer. You know, after you've said thank you for everything and after you've prayed for all your loved ones, what else is there to pray about, you know? And this is how Yahuwah does speak to me so much. Um, while I'm trying to formulate something, I'm trying to to bring over to him. He already knows my, my thoughts. And, and I'm talking about you as well. Um, I'm just giving it from my perspective. But you surely identify with this. He already knows exactly what I'm trying to say. And he knows exactly how I feel. I feel this morning, is a, this morning I feel like it's, a, it's going to be an effort for me to pray. So 
uh, Father, I don't want to uh, have to say lots of words and first worship you and then I have to repent of things and then I have to find scripture that I can read aloud as my prayer. I don't feel like that effort this morning. And as I'm complaining to him, he brings to my remembrance. Doesn't Yeshua say, I will give you the Ruach HaKodesh who will bring everything that I'm teaching you to your remembrance. So he brings to my remembrance Nehemiah. Nehemiah was the cupbearer to the king and he was the guy that was sent back to Jerusalem to go and rebuild the walls. And during this Pesach 2023 um, gathering, we are going to really um, look at Nehemiah and Ezra. We're going to learn so much about our end time journey. But anyway, so God rem reminds me um, that Nehemiah, you know, as he was um, pouring the wine, because it was his job to be a wine pourer, a cup bearer to the king. And as he's pouring the wine, as he is busy with his daily task, you know, his manual labor, walking towards this, greeting the king, pouring the wine, in his heart, he's talking to God. God, help me with this problem. Father, go ahead of me. Um, when he finally ends up in Jerusalem, he's got lots of challenges and problems and, and um, the enemy is facing up to him. And then he will say, Father, did you, did, did you just see? Did you see what just happened? Did you hear what they said to me? Father, um, did you see how they um, blasphemed your name and how they are laughing at, at us? So the, the whole day long, maybe he had some time for prayer. In the morning, he put his prayer shawl on. He was facing Jerusalem and he was praying for the return of Israel to Jerusalem and for the prophecies to be fulfilled and for Messiah to come and all these big things. But during his day, while he was doing his small little things, things that, you know, the almighty God of heaven and earth doesn't have time for, surely God is not going to... Um, see and hear everything we do during the day unless we you know sin of course then you know he's there but but surely he's too busy for for the for our um, menial little tasks our small little problems that we have with a with a taxi that drives in front of us I don't have that problem anymore I'm so happy for that but maybe I'm working with a hammer and I'm I'm hurting my hand and there's nobody that sees it you know, God, you know, surely, you know, he's almighty, he sees everything, but he, he's not interested, I just hurt my hand. And yet, Yahuwah showed me, um, with, with this remembrance of Nehemiah, how Nehemiah could come to God during the day, complain to him about something that was done towards him or towards some other people that wasn't nice. Nehemiah told Yahuwah when he, when he felt offended. He told him during the day when he was busy pouring the wine for the king that he was scared. And, he, and he, he asked, God, did you see this now? God, do you understand I'm scared now? Help me with this. And, and these, these are not prayers. This is communication. So as we ended yesterday's session, with this big enemy battalion on the one side. We say the word, but. But Samuel ministered before Yahuwah, even being just a child. And that is with us. We can minister before Yahuwah, do our daily work before Yahuwah, even though we are like children. And his name is Shama Al, because Al will Shama. You can have this communication with your Elohim. Have a time of prayer. And sometimes if you don't feel like having an, a, a serious, intensive or praise or worship or you just don't feel like praying, then you know what? Just communicate with him. Just talk to him. He is the L that Shema. Okay, so that is the but. Um, and this is for us a very good a lifelong instruction and advice on how we can also then stand um, on the other side of the scale. They are on that side and we are on this side. 
So some, but Samuel managed it before Yahuwah, being a child, girded with a linen effort. So he is still small, but Hannah has brought him to the temple and he's now fulfilling his destiny. And he's going to be also, his name is Shemar El. So there will come a time when he also has to Shemar to El in the instructions that Yahuwah gives to him. But even as a child, even um, the Bible says we are still children in the faith. We are still growing. Some of us still need a lot of milk. And here and there people are starting to eat, um, you know, solid food, like Paul says. But we are all still growing. So we can also minister before Yahuwah. Gird it with a linen effort. And remember what Shamahal represents. You know, the, the, the child that was never there. From Ephraim, the scattered lost um, children. Out of the barren woman. The woman that has forsaken her husband, doesn't have her husband. She's got no children. So, so yes, Shamahal is representing those unborn lost children out of Ephraim, out of the house of Israel, coming, being girded with a linen effort, you know, the, uh, the righteous works of the saints are the uh, pure white linen clothes, the righteousness of Yeshua. Um, and uh, we come to minister before Yahuwah. We come out of every tribe, nation, and tongue. We Shema, and we are learning that He does Shema us as well, because He's our Father. And as, as this, um, as we are Samuel, we come out from the barrenness and the lost um, tribes and the, the empty, uh, sick, um, you know, as Yeshua said, I came to, to heal the sick. Um, what is that word? Uh, Melodzite? What is Melodzite? Um, oh, leprosy. How, how many times does the Bible represent when you are not in God's will, then you are like a leprous man. So we come out of that position, out of the position on the other side of the scale. And then we come under the tabernacle of God and we wear the linen. And of course, the effort is the um, breastplate of the, of the priest. Um, and here we wear the breastplate of righteousness of course Samuel was not from the tribe of Levi or the family of Aaron so he was never the high priest but he still had um, an effort as a priest in this temple and the same as with us we are not high priests Yeshua is the high priest but with our linen clothes being children uh, having an obedient ear to Shema we also minister before Yahuwah and verse 19 for me is so cute oh it's so sweet look at this Verse 19, moreover, his mother made him a little coat. Look, it's so sweet. Every year she brought it to him when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. I can just imagine every year um, as she went home from Shiloh after seeing Samuel and giving him his little coat, she will start working on the new coat that she's making for him. And she knows that now this coat must be a little bit bigger because every year Samuel is growing. And this is how, this is the mother heart of our father. This is his caring side. He's also year after year as we go for the yearly feasts, as we do the, the holy feast biblical days. Father is also making new clothes for us year after year. We are growing as children and he gives us the, the, the robes of righteousness to wear and he makes them bigger for us every time we go through the yearly cycle and we've learned more about him and have come into a deeper relationship with him. He dresses up in a new coat because now the old coat has become a little bit too small now. So we have to get a, a new bigger one. It's so, so gorgeous. She made him a little coat and every year she brought it to him. And this reminds us of the coat also of Joseph, you know, the multicolored coat. Because there comes a time when the, the babies, the, the little children must grow up and be in that position where this multicolored coat fits us. 
Because remember, the multicolored coat of Joseph represents the, 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 the multicolored cultural nations, tribes, and tongues, and peoples. And that coat was torn apart. The coat that Yeshua was wearing, his robe, was you know, not, not his linen, um, but, but the robe that they um, you know, put over him, was also torn as they beat him and as they had the thorn of crowns and there was blood on it, like the brothers of Joseph put blood on his coat. And the, um, the kingdom of God was torn in two, uh, house of Judah, house of Israel, and there was blood on it. And this is how Joseph's um, uh, whole life is such a symbology and a representation of what Yeshua had to go through to bring the restoration of this multicolored coat again. So the, the, the children must grow up. As Samuel grew, he became bigger and he got a bigger coat all the time, up to the point where Joseph, when he was still a child, a spoiled little brat, he was wearing that multicolored coat and he didn't really understand the meaning of it. And it was eventually torn and blood was poured upon it and he had to go through such a growing up stage up to the point where he became an absolute um, humble servant of God, being crushed down to the ground, but then being lifted up, representing how Yeshua, humble servant, crushed but then lifted up. And when he comes again, he's the king of kings. Um, so verse 20, Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, Yahuwah, give you seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to Yahuwah. And they went unto their own home again. So out of the seed of this woman that she's um, borrowing or giving back to God, and we discussed this already, there will be a hundredfold harvest. The seed from Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, all the way through to all the people in the Bible through which the Messianic seed is coming, there will be a hundredfold harvest. And out of the life of Samuel, everything that he did for Israel, there was a hundredfold. And even up to today, we are still learning from Samuel. The, the harvest is still growing. There is still seed coming from Hannah and Samuel and Elkanah. And Yahuwah visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. So that's so beautiful. Yahuwah's blessings didn't stop there. Now that the curse was broken, now that the barrenness was broken and the children started coming back into the kingdom of Yahuwah, now she gets more and more sons and daughters. And this is prophetic for, for this whole message that Samuel's life and Hannah's life has for us. And the child Samuel grew before Yahuwah. You know, he grew, his little coat became bigger and bigger and bigger every year. But he also grew in his ministering before Yahuwah. And he also grew in his Shema, in how much he listens and obeys Elohim. He grew in all aspects. All aspects. All aspects. With God, he grew. But also with men, in the sight of men, he grew. Look at verse 26. Compare, what was this, verse 21. And the child Samuel grew before Yahuwah. Verse 26, and the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with Yahuwah and also with men. Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't, doesn't that teach us how to, um, like I said this morning, if, if, I, if I don't feel like praying, do I fall out of favor with God? Oh, I've sinned. No, I didn't pray this morning. No, having um, another type of communication and relationship with Yahuwah. You know, as I spent my time maybe working extremely hard in the vegetable garden, planting and not knowing if I'm doing the right thing, what is preventing me from, from talking to God while I'm doing that, while I'm being worried if what I'm doing is right, while I'm doing the Bible study research and I'm scared is this Bible study going to reach the people that's hungry for the word of God? Let me discuss it. Let me complain like Nehemiah. Let me tell God during my, my daily tasks. I, I don't have to reserve that only for prayer. Because as I do that, Yahuwah is teaching me how to do things differently. 
as I confide in him, it stops me from making my own plans. It reminds me that he's with me. So instead of when I hit my hand with a hammer, instead of then saying a curse word, I can say, oh, Father, did you see I hit my hand? And immediately I'm talking to him and I'm not saying a curse word. So, so he's, he's changing us as we have this daily walk with him. And we are in favor with him, bringing everything to him. But we are also being changed by him. So we come into favor with men, with people, because our attitude, our character, everything is being changed. So that is the instruction for us, a lesson for us in this. But it immediately reminded me of Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Because as Samuel grew... Um, In favor of God, Luke chapter 2, what did I say? Verse 42, no. Luke verse 52, I apologize. As Samuel was growing in favor with God and with men, so was Yeshua. Luke 2 verse 52, and Yeshua increased in wisdom and stature, and he grew in favor with God and man, both with Yahuwah and with men, both Samuel and and Joshua, and so must we follow that example. Let's continue. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 22. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto Israel, how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. We discussed this already in the previous session. And he said unto them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of all your evil dealings, um, by all this people. All the people are complaining about you. He says in verse 24, Eli, after asking his sons, why do you do these things? No, my sons, for it is not a good report that I get from you. You make Yahuwah's people to transgress. You are causing Yahuwah's children to sin. You're causing the women to sin. You're causing the men to sin because the men's intention was to come to the tabernacle and sacrifice and worship Yahuwah. And now, because you are um, dealing with them in, in this way, you know, taking their meat by force and um, getting them to transgress the Torah because they're giving you the meat before they have cooked it and all these things, you are causing them to become angry and sad and disillusioned and depressed and um, not wanting to come to the temple to worship anymore. You are a stumbling block to the children of God. You are causing sin to come into Israel. But if Eli could only have taught them to repent, he was angry with them and he asked them, why do you do this? And he questioned them and he challenged them, but he didn't bring them back to the Torah. He didn't bring them back to repentance. There was no chance for them for a revival in their lives and for a change in their lives because their father didn't, um, d- didn't bring them back to Yahuwah's feet. But Samuel did. If we go a little bit ahead, chapter 7, verse 3. And Samuel spoke unto the house of Israel, saying, If you return unto Yahuwah with all your heart, then put away the strange gods from you, and prepare your hearts unto Yahuwah to serve Him only. This is what Eli should have taught his children. Samuel, the little child that grew up, he taught that to Israel. And because Eli didn't teach the Torah, his sons made the children of Israel to break the Torah. If one man sins against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against Yahuwah, Who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they didn't listen to the voice of their father, because Yahuwah would slay them. Yahuwah would kill them. Their hearts were hardened like Pharaoh. Um, So this is a very good question. Eli, for all his faults and problems he had, this is a, it's almost like a slogan. It's almost something that we can put on our car bumper stickers. It's something we can post onto our Facebook pages. It's something we can use as a, um, a placard, 
that you, that you put upon your your wall. He says, if a man sins against another and another human being, the judge will judge him. But if a man sins against Yahuwah, Yahuwah is the judge. What man can then stand in for you? This is a very, very good question. For all the heathen people, for all the rebellious people, for all the satanic and demonic people, but also for the ignorant and disobedient people, as you break his laws, you know, who can stand in for you? He is the judge. You cannot go to the judge when, when you've sinned against another man. The judge will make things right between you and him. But, but if you sin against the judge himself, there's no other judge. Where do you go to? Who do you go to? Who shall entreat for him? Who shall stand in for him when you sin against Yahuwah? It's okay to sin against man. You know, you ask forgiveness and you can make right and you can do restitution. But how do you do restitution to Yahuwah? To the, to the Almighty God of heaven and earth? Of course, we know the answer. Eli, with this question, is prophesying Messiah. Because although the Bible says Messiah is the judge, God leaves the judgment of this world in the hands of the man called Yeshua HaMashiach. He's the judge. Uh, but the Bible also says God is the judge. And, and how, how God himself, Yahuwah our Savior, Yahuwah is my salvation, Yeshua, how God himself being the judge also became the one that is standing in for us if we repent, not if we sin against the judge, he doesn't, he's not going to stand in for you then. You have to come to him. You have to appoint him as your advocate. Then only can you entreat the judge himself as your advocate is the judge. And yet he is the sacrifice all at the same time. How amazing is that? What, a, what an excellent question. Regrettably, these two sons, just like the people in the world today, does not listen. They don't shamuel. They don't shema. They don't listen to the voice of their father. Just like people today. The children, the naughty children, the sons of Belial, do not listen to the voice of Father Yahuwah.